Hello, Abutis from around the world. My name is Kais, and I am 11 years old, and I live in Montreal, Canada. Welcome to our Abut Zoom session with me and my co-host, Arihan, who currently lives in New Delhi, India. We'll be interviewing our guest change maker, Vitka Yadav, who is also based in New Delhi, India. Vitka is the co-founder of Development Consul consortium and or an organization dedicated to work with children women and vulnerable communities to overcome poverty inequality abuse and injustice Vitika is also an anti-slavery and gender rights activist Vitika's work contributes to several sustainable development goals particularly to SDG number five, gender equality, and SDG number 10, reduced inequalities. We hope that you will enjoy this session. Now, now I'll be handing over to Arihan to ask the first question. What is slavery? What is slavery? Yeah. Okay, um, so, you know, when people are forced to work, or live somewhere without being paid, they are coerced, they are not allowed to leave, and they are put in situations of exploitation. That is a situation which is called slavery. When you're not allowed to leave and you are kept in spaces where all your rights are taken away and you are made to work but you're not paid anything, that is called slavery. How many slaves are there in the world? How many slaves are there in the world? So, you know, slavery, um, the kind of problem it is, and we all know that it's an organized crime. It's very difficult to have exact number of slaves in the world, but there have been certain estimates which have been made as recent as 2017 by the United Nations International Labor Organization and International Organization on Migration. And the number stands at around 40 million slaves in the world today. And about a quarter of them are actually children. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of people in slavery. And, and we think that slavery is abolished, that slavery is illegal. But the fact is that there's no country in the world today that is immune to slavery. I have another question. Yes. Why do people make uh, other, other people's slaves? That's a very important question. Why do people keep other people as slaves? Like, why does slavery persist? It's because, um, you know, when we look at drugs trafficking or arms trafficking, likewise, human trafficking and buying and selling of human beings is a profitable business. So people think that by buying and selling people and exploiting them, they're able to make money. But it just talks about, you know, how inhuman we can be. The fact that we can actually keep people as slaves and make profits out of them to make them work without pay, to take all their rights away, to not give them the money that they must be paid for the work they do. And I guess it's really, it's, it's a very good question. I don't know how to answer this question, really. Why do people... Why do people keep slaves? You know, why, why does this persist? And I think it's, it's an important question for all of us to ask because I think, you know, when we go to the shops and we like 110 things, you know, there's so much available in the market and we all want to buy and we are constantly thinking, oh, this is really at a good price, man, as in it's cheap. When we want to buy something cheap, we also need to understand that there might be, the, the reason why, is it, why it is so cheap is because the people who worked on it were possibly not even paid. So every time we go to the market in terms of what we want to wear, be it clothes, be it shoes, be it the food we eat, the gadgets we buy, we really need to think twice about the fact that is whatever we are buying, is it coming from some form of slavery? Is there some form of slavery involved? And I think so basically slavery is a bad thing and they don't get paid after the word hard work that they do. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And it is bad because is it, it's, 
it's to, like to keep people it's and bullying it's bullying people and just taking their lives away and making, taking their lives away and making money out of them exactly yeah. yes which is why it is inhuman it is wrong and it is not just about people who enslave other people it is also about people like you and me who need to think twice about what we buy and how we buy and to make sure that we are putting that I, pressure on companies I, like you I, bought a pair of shoes today yeah. right we need to think about it was was there any labor any forced labor any child labor you know children are made to work in factories they're they're kept in slavery i, I heard that in america black people are getting killed and making slaves and like well yes i mean yes that's another that's another point yes that you know uh, some people are mistreated for the for their origin or for their color or for their you know for ethnicity for and their gender. for their gender for a lot of different things um and uh, and while slavery is legally it's abolished everywhere it's not it's legal bad. it's crime but it still happens everywhere that's that's the biggest problem and there are 40 million slaves in the world even today well covid i mean yeah the times we are living in Okay, I'm done with my questions. You're done with your questions, okay? Kaza, do you have any questions for me? Um, yeah, I have a few. Um, what inspired you to do your work on slavery? Um, you know the fact that uh, you know when I met um, uh, when I met a freed person for the first time who was enslaved. it really made me think very very hard about the privileges that i had grown up with the fa- the fact that we had you know sort of grown up in a very protected environment and the and the fact that i could place myself in that person's shoes um is what really what is what really hit me the fact that you know this it's not about it's not about anybody else's problem it has to be your problem because anybody can be enslaved and if you do not stand up for for anyone else today tomorrow it could be you and something that is wrong is wrong and the fact that you need to stand against it so i think that really inspires me every single day the fact that i never take my privilege for granted i always always feel that the there are lots of inequalities in this world and it's it just is unfair that we continue to live our lives without really standing up for what is right so i think it's that drive and that passion for standing up for the right thing that inspires me to do what i do every day all right well i have one last question cuz i don't really have many um do you have any advice for people who would also like to become change makers yes um i think there is uh, you know there's so much that we can complain about because there's so many things in this world which are wrong but i guess underestimating the power that we have as individuals and also the fact that you know not to segregate it as you know i'm in a certain age group so i do i cannot influence behaviors i cannot do much about it um how can i make change people generally underestimate themselves and i think that's where the problem is so i feel every person in this world has the power to influence and to change each one of us it doesn't require us to be in a certain country specifically or to be gender. in a certain position or to be a certain gender not at all it just requires us to know and acknowledge that there is a problem and we all need to play our part to do that little bit because all of us can do that little bit and that becomes and and to be a change maker it's not something it's 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 not something that is for a for a specific group of people who can decide to do something but all of us have it have it in us and we all we all have to learn to stand up for what is right just voice your opinion opinion stand up and do your best and just mobilize people you can do it at a school level you can do it at a university level you can do it you know in your professional spaces but each one of uh, each one of us have the opportunity to make a change we just have to look around and see where do we start So um thank you Vizika and Arsen and the great discussion for today and all the things we learned today and thank you Ubuntu for listening to this interview
and make sure to follow us on our social medias, Instagram and YouTube. So you can hear about upcoming sessions with other teams like this one. Please also tell your friends about the books and share our social media links with them. And last but not least, go to www.abutinities.com to learn about opportunities to collect a digital badges.